Polio tormented America and Europe until the 1960s, paralyzing more than 15,000 people a year in America and 8,000 in Britain. And that was mostly children, according to The Economist. The invention of a vaccine set the world on a path to eradicate the polio virus. But in June, a 20-year-old man was paralyzed by polio in New York. And in recent months, the virus has turned up in wastewater samples in London and New York. The type of polio virus detected in London and New York is a vaccine-derived strain, a rare mutation originating from the oral polio vaccine, according to The Economist. Dr. Pyle Patel, an infectious diseases physician and assistant professor at the University of Michigan Medical School, joins us now to weigh in on the virus's return. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, definitely glad to be here. So what, can, tell us what is meant by vaccine derived strain. What does that mean? Yeah, you know, this whole issue can be really complicated. Um, and so I'll, I'll try to break it down as simply as possible. But, um, you know, when, you know, in the 50s and when polio was kind of running wild in the United States and throughout the world, we didn't have vaccine. And so that's why so many people unfortunately got ill, had things like paralysis. And really around the same time, two vaccines came out one is the one that we use here in the United States, and that's an inactivated vaccine. So it's, it's not a live virus. That's what all of us got vaccinated with as kids. Um, it, there's also a second vaccine that came out that's actually a little bit easier to give because you don't have to refrigerate it as long. It's, um, you can just give it to kids in their mouth. That's what's used throughout the world. That is a live virus vaccine. What that means is it works really well, but it can have some side effects. And so what seems to have happened in New York is actually that someone who got vaccinated outside of the US mm -hmm. probably came here and was shedding that live virus. And that person who unfortunately didn't get infected was unvaccinated. So at the end of the day, the people who are still at risk for any kind of polio are folks who are unvaccinated. So complex issue, but at the end of the day, the sentence that I would say is you're really only at risk if you're unvaccinated. Uh, thank you so much for that breakdown. That was so clear and so helpful. Um, you know, we are at a time when vaccines are very much in the news. Uh, we do know that we have a lot of neighbors and fellow Americans who are vaccine hesitant when it comes to coronavirus, that they were not convinced that this was the best way to protect themselves. I wonder, Dr. Patel, what would you say to people who are looking at this, you looking at a vaccine that ended up actually giving people or creating a situation in which people were vulnerable and exposed and even got the very thing it was promising to inoculate them from? How, do, how would you address somebody who said, OK, well, I'm going to take that as you know, further information when making you know, decisions about, for example, the COVID vi uh, vaccine? Yeah, I mean, I think that polio is actually a, a great story in showing how well vaccines have worked. If we think about our grandparents and, you know, what was happening at that time when they were young, you know, it was really scary to go out and go to the library, go to the store. You had no way to protect yourself from getting this virus or your kids from getting this virus and you never knew what could happen. We saw even one of our own US presidents, unfortunately, get paralyzed from polio. And so you've really seen over the last 50 years, very, very few to zero cases of polio in the United States because we have vaccinated all of these generations of children and we have not seen any cases of polio due to the vaccine. It's a great story. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, what we're seeing now is that folks who have remained unvaccinated, that vaccine hesitancy that has unfortunately hit some communities harder than others, leaves those children and young adults at risk for polio when there really shouldn't have been a need for polio to come back to the United States. Mm -hmm.
Well, because the polio vaccine, you know, works differently, right, than the COVID vaccine, which was, you know, we were told or we, some people had promised initially that if you get vaccinated from COVID, uh, with the vaccine, it seems like you're not going to get COVID. Well, okay, there's going to be rare breakthrough infections. Now we all know, you know so, so many people have gotten it after having gotten vaccinated that the vaccine, while offering protection against robust um, illness, and, and you know, being helpful to people who are at heightened risk and all that, uh, that's good, but the vaccine is not preventing cases um, itself. And that has, I think, um, helped to increase maybe the hesitancy, hesitancy about vaccines in general because that, you know, talking point about the vaccine ended up about the COVID vaccine ended up not being the case. So is it important to then, you know, distinguish the COVID vaccine from a vaccine like the polio vaccine, which does in fact stop you from getting polio, not just improve your outcomes with polio, but actually stop you from getting it, unlike the COVID vaccine? Yeah, you know, I think that, um, yeah, I think they're all, all of these, unfortunately, every infectious disease is, is very different. Um, and again, I think that the, the polio vaccine and, and the stories really, you know, that, that we've probably heard or read about from people that we know in our own family that were affected, I think that there really was at, between the 50s and the 80s in the United States, a sense of really trying to protect children from having to suffer from this horrible disease. And that really led to, you know, a lot of people getting vaccinated against polio. It was really a different time, a different kind of sense of thinking about vaccines. Even before COVID and before this last pandemic, unfortunately, vaccine hesitancy has been something that we've been dealing with in the US and internationally. I think it's a really complex issue, um, but you do see some of the same factors come through that have been leading to, unfortunately, parents making these decisions for their children that leave them at risk, not just for polio, COVID, all sorts of other infectious diseases, including measles. So I think really, you know, if you wanna learn about vaccines and how they work and how they've really worked, polio is a great example. Mm. I wonder if you, from your experience, um, have a sense of, you know, what works in terms of convincing people, for example, a parent, let's say, who doesn't want their child to get, you know, the measles vaccine, what, what works in terms of convincing them? We know that, you know, just giving them more information often doesn't. Do you have a sense of what does work? Yeah, you know, it's a really, it's a really tough issue. And I think that there have been a lot of people looking into this more recently. And I, I do believe that there's a lot of groups um, kind of looking at this from a number of different lenses, because I think in different communities, um, the decision making can be really different as to why um, people make this decision. I think um, that's something that public health leaders are, are continuing to invest in. One of the things that I think can really help is hearing from a trusted community member. Um, so often investing in educating leaders within a community and then having them bring that conversation down to community members can be a really kind of effective way. Yeah. What, is there a risk of, uh, are, you know, are we really just talking about, you know, one polio or a few polio cases here and there? Or is, there is there some risk if it's showing up in the wastewater of that there's going to be an outbreak among, I guess, among the people who are not vaccinated for it? Yeah, you know, the way that I would think about this, I mean, I think it's not, you know, not news that anyone wanted to hear. Um, one thing that I've definitely gotten questions about from people is, you know, am I protected? How do I know? So one thing I would say is if you are um, someone who was born in the United States, you have your immunization records or you have, you know, a trusty parent that can help. That's the first thing to do is make sure that you are vaccinated. You had all of those vaccines when you were younger. Um, and, you know, if, if you are someone who during the pandemic, you may have had trouble getting your child to get all of their vaccines on time, um, that, you know, there was a lot of holdup in getting to regular routine appointments because of all of the things that we were dealing with in the healthcare system 
system because of the pandemic. Now is the time really to get all of those vaccines up to date. Mm -hmm. So that, those are the first pieces of advice that I would I would have. But I would say at the end of the day, if you are vaccinated, that you know you really you really are going to be protected. But it is those folks out there that are unvaccinated that are, that are at risk. The fact that we did end up seeing someone who suffered paralysis from this probably does mean that there were more cases that really didn't get identified because those people probably ended up being okay. Mm. Very interesting. Well, Dr. Patel, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. And we'll be back with more Rising right after this.